Hi, this is an introduction to the concept of partners in the Bodega content system. On screen here, I'm at the Manager web app, uh, which we host an instance of that anyone can use at manager.makeplaylive.com. And I've put in my username and password here. And this can be um, an account that I've set up previously just to browse uh, bodega stores. So maybe I was on Plasma Active, create an account. I take that same account and I can use it immediately right here. So I'm going to connect with this brand new account that I created. And when I do so, it takes me to the uh, dashboard and um, which shows all of my activity and whatnot. Of course, there's not much because I haven't done anything. So we've got at the toolbar a home button, a partners button, which we'll get to in a second, um, a little button here that lets me edit my account or log out. And then here it shows me my partners, which I don't have any. Next to it is store activity. I haven't done anything, so of course there's no store activity. And below that is the warehouse section, which tells you which warehouse you're connected to, how to contact them, link to documentation, etc. So a partner is a way for the warehouse to know who owns or is responsible for a certain bit of content or what, as we call them, assets, um, or, and or who owns and can edit um, a store, a specific store. So you need to be a, a member of a partner before you can start uploading content or opening stores or whatnot. And the people that um, put content into the warehouse we call publishers and people who open stores and, and, dis and uh, expose content to their audience, we call them distributors. So I'm going to uh, get right in, create a new partner, confirm I represent that person, and I'm going to put in an email here to contact, and that's all you need to do to start a partner. I create the partner, bing. There's no approval process for this. You just make it so. Uh, so right now, now, to edit things, you just go in and click right on them, the name, the email. You can um, add links. So for instance, if you have a, uh, you know, a blog or Facebook or a website, you can add that and, um, to your partner. And then anytime someone views um, something you've uploaded, they'll also see all that information as well. Next to that, we have the partner edit, or the, the people editor for the partner. So it shows that I'm a member of this partner. That's not a big surprise because, well, I made it. So uh, here we see also that I'm checked as this row of check boxes. They're all checked off account manager, content creator, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, these are roles, and roles define what you're allowed to do on behalf of the partner that you're a member of. So the account manager looks after bank accounts, um, content creator, they can upload um, new assets on behalf of the partner. The partner manager is the person who adds or removes people, edits the links and other, and other such information. Store manager is a person who, well, manages your stores, um, defines their structure and etc. Uh, a validator is a person who says that this new asset this person has made or this edit they made to an asset for this publisher can be published, is ready for publication. So this allows a, a post-published kind of workflow within a partner. In a common case, a lot of people are just going to be all by themselves and they do everything, which is why when you create a, a partner, you get all the rules by default. However, this is not going to be the case in companies or larger, um, you know, free software projects or whatnot. You'll probably have divisions of labor and these uh, roles allow you to do that. So I'm going to add another person here. All you do is put in their email address and they have to have an account already, but that's all you need is their, their email address. And I'm going to say that this person can be a content creator and a validator. So they're actually going to be able to create new assets when they log in next. So I hit save, poof, it shows that we now have more than one person and we now have two. And you can add as many people as you want. You can also remove people at will. So now we have a partner. Great, we can do stuff, right? Well, not yet. Um, if we go back to home, we'll see that we have a partner but no assets, no stores, nothing. We go back to partners, we see that underneath the publisher and distributor columns, we have request links. We'll just take a look at publishing for right now. 
So if you would like to put assets into the warehouse, you hit request. This brings up the terms of services, which are actually hosted on the server side um, in, in the warehouse. So if you were connecting to a partner or a manager app that was connected to a different uh, warehouse, you might get a different set of terms of services. You agree to them. Um, then you just give a simple reason of what's going on. We make awesome music and we'd like to put them in a warehouse. Dee -dee. Cool, so I hit request and the request is sent. In the next version, um, this actually uh, shows you that you've got a request pending, so you don't have to keep wondering, clicking and whatnot. But what happens now is an email gets sent to the warehouse team, um, or notification in general, um, and they get told, hey, someone, you know, any better set up Pearl Jam and would like to be a publisher. Um, and then they come and they click it through. This is really just a process to ensure that people don't abuse the warehouse as, you know, a personal backup and storage system, um, and also that they uh, agree to the, the, the terms. So eventually, I'll log out here, um, the warehouse team comes along and clicks it through. And next time you log in, you find out you have ah, an assets and a statistics button in your toolbar. Um, and we come to partner list again, we see that, yep, we can be a publisher. Now, I mentioned you can also be a member of more than one partner. Indeed, you can. You can come in here and maybe we'll call it um, solo projects and create a new partner. And these partners are separate. So if I come into the assets tab now where I can add an asset, maybe I'll add one. Actually, before I add one, let's go back there. There's a drop down menu here that shows the partners you're a member of. And so you can be looking at just the things that are associated with that one partner. So if you're involved with a bunch of different groups and projects and partners, you will be able to keep it separate fairly easily. So if we come and create an asset, let's say we're going to make a book, um, ask us for front cover, back cover, you know, what license is it under, um, multiple licenses even, category, um, type, uh, or we already did that. Um, you put your file, your description. When you're done, you hit create, and now this asset will be associated with the um, the Pearl Jam partner. I could also make it a solo project by PJ asset if I wanted. Um, and again, if I change the type, um, then I get different things that I can do to describe this asset. But once I've hit OK or or create at the bottom here. Oops create at the bottom here, um, it will show up in my assets list as being associated with the partner that I used. And that's the entire point of partners. Partners allow you to put multiple people together as a team working on stuff inside the warehouse, assets and or stores, um, allows you to divide the different tasks and, and roles and responsibilities. Pretty simple concept and allows uh, bodega to scale from just individuals putting up content to larger organizations as well. Cheers.